CIET-NCERT presents National Curriculum Framework 2023 Part C School Subjects Page 475 Chapter 10 Subjects in Grades 11 and 12 The design of the secondary stage including grades 11 and 12 is detailed in part a chapter 2 this chapter details the design of the subjects that students will study in grades 11 and 12 as described in part a chapter 2 in grades 11 and 12 students will have flexibility and choice for the subjects that they want to study they would choose from the subjects on offer from the schools to truly enrich the education in these grades schools should offer a wide range of subjects as this ncf starts getting implemented due to practical reasons the schools may start with a few additions to their subject list However in the medium term and long term this should cover the entire range of curricular areas and disciplines within them This chapter has only an illustrative set of subjects for grades 11 and 12 The intent of this chapter is to lay out the principles by which the subjects and the content therein would be designed while the requirements from students and schools in grades 11 and 12 will ensure a breadth of study providing multidisciplinary exposure the study of each subject must also provide depth of study the approach and the principles described here intend to provide depth of study in each of the subjects taken up on this page we have a picture of a lady teacher who is trying to describe an organ image to the students in class from the picture we have an idea of the depth of study of the biology subject that is the organ image given on this page page 476 as with all such situations in curricular design depth of study will not come from loading an excessive load of content onto the student the content must be just enough and appropriate to give an understanding of the most important conceptual structures and paradigms in the subject to the key questions in the subject and the nuances of methods of inquiry the expectation must be that having studied the subjects in grades 11 and 12 students should be able to pursue it further independently or in a higher education institution the chapter describes what can be the generic curricular goal for the subjects in grades 11 and 12 the actual subject goals and curriculum must respond to these generic curricular goals with specific matters that are relevant generic curricular goals for subjects in grades 11 and 12 students develop an understanding of the subject including its key conceptual structures paradigms range of questions most contemporary issues and subfields of study and methods of inquiry at a level of depth that enables them to pursue the study of the subject independently or in higher education 
the rest of this chapter has taken up some subjects as illustrations. Each illustration has the principles for design for grades 11 and 12 and illustrative content areas which could be spread over these two grades. These content areas together make for adequate content for grades 11 and 12 to achieve depth. Other content areas may also be chosen, but they must be adequately comprehensive as these areas are together. It must be noted that as with the list of subjects here, even the content areas within each subject are illustrative. They are intended to convey a sense of what the subject design may look like for these grades. Section 10.1 Social Science the Social Science and Humanities Curricular Area will illustratively offer History, Geography, Political Science, Psychology, Psychology and Mental Health, Economics, Development Economics, Sociology, Anthropology, Archaeology and Philosophy. 10.1.1 Philosophy This is an illustration for philosophy. 10.1.1.1 Principles for designing courses in philosophy The aim of teaching philosophy in grades 11 and 12 is to create independent thinkers rooted in the local context but with a lifelong capacity to apply abstract ideas to a range of different contexts through the acquisition of necessary tools and skills. The courses for philosophy must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will understand and appreciate the rich traditions of Indian philosophical thought. B. They will be able to explore contemporary issues in light of classical Indian philosophy. C. They will understand the synthesis of ancient Indian and later Western ideas from the view of 20th century Indian thinkers. Page 477 D. They will develop an ethos that will enable them to become better citizens. The study of this discipline in grades 11 and 12 must take a comparative approach rooted in Indian thought and the Indian context but also encouraging dialogue between different traditions and time periods. This approach will allow students to see how ancient ideas can shed light on current problems. They will also be able to see how solutions from one context can address problems from another context. Such an approach requires not only thinking critically, but thinking creatively, imaginatively and innovatively. 10.1.1.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given here are illustrative content areas for philosophy in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 Reasoning The focus will be on different kinds of reasoning, both formal and informal, drawing from the rich tradition of Indian logic, using ideas from texts such as the Vaisisika Sutra, Varsaganya's Sasti Tantra, and Aksapada's Nyai Sutra. 
students will learn to identify, reconstruct and evaluate arguments as well as different techniques for responding to arguments. This will enable them to participate in rigorous debates but with a focus on cooperation rather than competition based on the classical Indian model of VAD. They will be introduced to formal deductive reasoning through identifying what is wrong with an argument, propositional calculus, as well as engaging with probabilistic reasoning. Finally, they will study inductive reasoning with a focus on arguments from analogy and inference to reach the best explanation. They will refer not only to examples taken from their own lives, but also texts such as Nagarjuna's Mulya Madhya Makarika and Yogakara Bhumi Sastra. Content Area 2 Knowledge and Scepticism This content area is based on the classical Indian theory of knowledge, Pramana Sastra which is concerned with the idea of pramana, how we come to have knowledge. The three main types of pramana, perception, inference and testimony, proposed by ancient thinkers, will be studied along with later voices in Western philosophy. And the ideas applied to understand contemporary issues. Questions explored by students will include How do we come to know anything at all? And how can we be certain of what we know? We live in an age where it seems that knowledge can be accessed by anyone with a smartphone. But is this real knowledge? This content area will include ideas put forward by Advaita Vedanta, Karvaka, Yogakara and Kumari Labhat in his commentary on the Mimatsa Sutra and Buddhist thinkers. Students will also be introduced to a lively debate between Prabhakara Mimamsa and Nyaya that will help them in getting a firmer grasp on this problem. They will focus on the problems of trust, testimony and expert knowledge through exploring questions such as how do we know whom to trust when even experts cannot agree on a given issue? How can we trust some witnesses as believable and others as not in a court of law? On what grounds can we judge that a given website or news source is biased? Page 478 Content Area 3 Ethics Through this content area, students will be introduced to ethical reasoning as a way of thinking about moral issues, cheating, violence, plagiarism, littering, tolerance, equality, empathy. They face in day-to-day -day life enabling them to consider the ethical dimensions of these matters. This will help students understand ethical dilemmas by showing them normative ways of thinking about various issues. Students will develop the ability to be practical problem solvers while thinking about what it is to live an ethical and virtuous life themselves. This will be done through an introduction to ethics through writings from both Indian tradition, Buddhist thought, stories from Panchatantra, Jataka, Hitopadesh, Purusartha Siddhupaya, and the Western tradition. Students will be enabled to take a multi-perspective approach to ethical reasoning 
where they will be encouraged to develop their ethical views on these issues in cooperation with each other. Students will particularly be enabled to think about traditional Indian values and the values enshrined in the constitution from an ethical point of view. Content Area 4 Philosophy of Mind What exactly are we? What is the nature of the Atman? This was, along with questions about knowledge acquisition, one of the most divisive questions in classical Indian philosophy. On one hand, substance dualism in the Upanishads and the texts of the Nyaya Vaisesika Darsana sees the self as an eternal, immaterial substance, while on the other hand, materialists such as the Loka Yata Darsana see the self as no more than a conscious body. Some Buddhists deny that there even is such a thing as the self and argue that this illusory belief in Atman is the source of all suffering. In the contemporary context, these debates about the self usually end up as debates about personhood, the mind and the brain. Through this content area, students will examine how these ancient debates about the self can help us think about current issues around the mind, consciousness and artificial intelligence. The Jainas believed that there were many kinds of jiva, much as some philosophers today argue that non-human living beings such as animals and even sophisticated computers have minds. What are the implications of such a view? Students will focus on arguments for and against the implication of views as well as examine the social and ethical implications of these various stances on the nature of the mind or self. Content Area 5 Environmental Philosophy Through this content area, students will be able to think abstractly about questions related to environmental issues such as who is to blame for climate change and are current solutions ethical? Is damage to the environment bad only because of its effects on humans or do ethics reach beyond humanity? How should we change our political systems to take into account the rights of non-human animals? Is a carbon tax unfair to developing countries? What is climate justice? Students must be enabled to have an idea of potential answers and an understanding of how to adjudicate between these. They will be introduced to Indian and Western philosophical perspectives on the environment through engaging with environmental ideas from Vedas, Upanishads, Charaka Sanhita, Matsya Purana, Panchatantra and Jataka as well as Gandhi and Amartya Sen. They will also undertake a close study of grassroots environmental movements such as the Chipko movement, Green Revolution and Navadanya. The problems and questions addressed are at the foundations of environmental science and environmental economics and also draw on environmental history. Page 479 10.1.2 History This is an illustration for history. 10.1.2.1 Principles for designing courses in history The aim of teaching history is to inculcate a historical sensibility about the past while acquiring disciplinary understanding and knowledge. The courses for history must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will examine the Indian subcontinent from a historical lens spanning from prehistory and early history to the birth of the nation. B. 
they will receive a strong grounding in the substantive content of Indian history while remaining aware of India's place in the world. C. They will engage with perspectives on the emergence of modernity across the world with a specific focus on key transformations in Europe. D. They will understand the impact of events that occurred in one part of the world on other parts of the world over a period of time. E. They will acquire the methods of history, including the interpretation of literary texts and the methods of archaeology. Students will develop a historical consciousness by engaging with necessary disciplinary foundations, methodological tools and comparative frameworks. 10.1.2.2 Illustrative Courses Given here are illustrative content areas for history in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 Ancient world. Through this content area, students will take a comparative and methodological approach towards understanding the prehistory and early history of Indian subcontinent in the context of other parts of the world. It will cover the earliest population of the Indian subcontinent followed by the spread of agriculture in the fertile crescent and South Asia and the emergence of the earliest known cities and city-based civilizations in Mesopotamia, Egypt and the Indian subcontinent. Students will examine the ancient literary, mythological and religious works produced in India, Greece and Syria also covering the rise of new religions and philosophies in India and China. Methodologically, students will be introduced to the basics of archaeological and historical methods and will learn to interpret early literary texts as well as material culture to produce a historical narrative. Content Area 2 States and Empires in India through this content area, students will be introduced to various kinds of large and complex political formations such as states and empires in India from about the 5th century to the 16th century. They will learn about the formation of more centralized state systems than those that existed in the previous periods. They will critically examine the nature of these states especially the structures of power and levels of control over diverse geographies and communities. Page 480 Students will also be introduced to the widespread agricultural ecology and economy in India as well as to the Indian Ocean trade networks and overland trade routes such as the Silk Road to see how India was deeply connected to the rest of the world in those times. Content Area 3 Towards Modernity Through this content area, students will be introduced to the emergence of modernity as a temporal period and a concept, especially in the context of Europe. They will engage with the transformations to modern, cultural, state and economic institutions in Europe. In the cultural realm, Europe witnessed several key transformations, including the Renaissance and Reformation, the Scientific Revolution, Humanism and the emergence of the nation-state. Economic aspects of modernity included the emergence of mercantilism and the concurrent search for the new world, the industrial revolution and the spread of capitalism and colonialism. While the content area will focus on key historical transformations in Europe, it will also consider the impact these transformations had on the rest of the world, especially in America, Africa and Australia. Content Area 4 
birth of the modern Indian Republic. Through this content area, students will chart the emergence of colonial rule in India from the 16th century when the first European joint stock trading company arrived in India to the birth of the modern nation-state in 1947, extending the moment of this birth up to the integration of princely states and the adoption of constitution by our republic in 1950. Students will be familiarized with the struggle between European colonial powers for control over various parts of India and the various forms of Indian resistance, including peasant and Adivasi resistance movements. Students will also be introduced to the vast administrative, educational and social reforms that were introduced during the colonial period. Finally, students will discuss India's freedom struggle, including not only its well-known figures, but also some less-known figures. 10.1.3 Sociology This is an illustration for sociology. 10.1.3.1 Principles for designing courses in sociology the aim of teaching sociology is to help students understand society as a form of reality, as a level of human existence which exists within and beyond the individual. They must be able to connect sociological knowledge to understanding, actions and strategies in the everyday world as well as in building strategies for structural change. The courses for sociology must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will be enabled to better understand their own selves and the social institutions and structures which shape their lives. B. They will be able to grasp our shared humanity across all the variations that occur in different social locations. C. They will be able to understand how gender, material conditions and social groups and identities shape our subjectivities so that they can start building greater intersubjectivities. D. They will become aware of different ways of seeing society, including from Western and Indian perspectives and different social locations within India. Page 481. The emphasis must be on doing sociology rather than only reading it, thereby offering students reflexive, analytical and emancipatory ways of seeing the world. 10.1.3.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given here are illustrative content areas for sociology in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 – Introduction to Sociology Through this content area, students will be introduced to the sociological perspective through the exploration of certain social patterns that are fundamental to life in the contemporary era. These will include institutions such as family, marriage and kinship. They will also include the growth of capitalism, rationalization, industrialism and the state. Students will be introduced to sociological ways of understanding various forms of ethnicity and nationalism. Through these, the basic concepts and methods of sociology will be learnt, such as roles, norms, social structures and culture. Students will also be introduced to some basic research methods of sociology and how sociological knowledge is constructed. A sociological imagination will thus be learnt through which students will be able to see their selves within a broader changing social context. Content Area 2 Social Structure, Identity and Self in India 
students will be introduced to the study of India's social structure and how to connect it with patterns of subjectivity, such as the formation of the self and identity. They will learn to look at these from functionalist, conflict and interpretivist perspectives. Important aspects of India's social structures will be introduced, including the differences between rural and urban social life. The focus of the content area will be social structures that can lead to social inequalities and diversities related to gender, class, caste, tribe and religion as well as how unity and harmony with these diversities can be achieved. Their historically changing contours will be studied along with the social forces changing them. The social construction of the self and various kinds of identities will be discussed along with the relationship between the micro and the macro in social life the ways in which agency operates to change social structures, as well as the ways in which social structures affect our subjectivity, will be discussed. Content Area 3 – Politics, State and Development in India Politics is a way of deciding between contending points of view and can be a way of reconciling them or resulting one over the other. Through this content area, students will be introduced to the institutions and cultures involved in making decisions related to social life in India. They will also learn about various social forces that act to influence politics. The state is one of the major institutions which balances and decides between conflicting voices and strives for unity. Different approaches to the state will be introduced along with the challenges of bureaucratization. Democracy will be discussed as a way of connecting the state with different interest groups and social forces. Its trajectory in India will be explored along with challenges to it. Social movements will be discussed as a way of exerting pressure from outside the established system of power, which can provide an important corrective impulse. The relationship between politics, the state and the economy will be introduced. Students will learn the different ways in which humans adapt to their environment and their systems of production, distribution and consumption. Capitalism as the preeminent contemporary way of organizing this will be discussed, along with the challenges it poses. The changing and contested role of the state will also be discussed, along with different views on privatization. The trajectories of development in India and its experience by different social groups will be studied. The impact of globalization on the state, culture and the economy will be traced. Page 482 Content Area 4 Sociology of Culture, Mass Media, Education and Religion Through this content area, Students will learn about the importance of culture in human existence and the different institutions which shape and contest it. The major ways of understanding culture will be introduced, including culture as the entire way of life of a community and culture as a code of symbols and practices. The multi-layered and overlapping character of culture will be illustrated through different examples in the mass media, where many voices exist at the same time. The politics of culture will be introduced through ideas of hegemony and counter-hegemony in mass media, cultural power and the assertion of interpretations. As a method of domination will be explored through examples of communities, castes, religions, languages, and so on.
status groups and their politics will also be discussed. Connected with this will be the problem of social location and objectivity in knowledge. The sociological perspective on culture will be deepened through the study of education and religion. The functions of religion in social life will be introduced along with its relationship with other social structures and processes such as family, gender and politics. The social and cultural processes changing religion will be explored. The functions of education along with interpretivist and conflict perspectives on education will be introduced through examples from India. A particular focus will be to understand differences in educational access and achievement in India. Section 10.2 Science The science curricular area will illustratively offer biology, chemistry, physics, modern physics, computational biology, and earth sciences. 10.2.1 Biology 10.2.1.1 Principles for designing courses in biology The aims of teaching biology are for students to explore the subject at different scales and have an appreciation for the process of science and the progression of scientific ideas. Students will develop the capacity to engage more deeply with any area in the discipline. The courses for biology must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will be able to see the integration of different fields of biology and highlight the interconnections between these fields. B. They will develop capacities for observation, documentation and familiarity with quantitative reasoning and multidisciplinary approaches. C. They will engender sensitivity towards biological issues, environment, health in their surroundings and be aware of how citizens can contribute to their local communities and to science. D. They will be aware of bioethical concerns that arise in biology today. Page 483. They will also be exposed to diverse careers in the life sciences. Biology has a reputation for being descriptive and students often have to remember many facts without having any context. This produces students who have a lot of factual knowledge but are ill-equipped to meet the challenges of modern life sciences. To align school education with current practices and life sciences, the content must be streamlined. Whenever description-heavy content is included, an attempt must be made to provide appropriate context. Students must be exposed to a multi-pronged approach to studying life sciences and a balance between breadth and depth in covering different themes must be maintained. 10.2.1.2 Illustrative Content Areas in Biology Given here are illustrative content areas for biology in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 Biodiversity and Biogeography of India Through this content area, students will be given an overview of the scope of life sciences, the various length and time scales at which biological phenomena occur, and the methods employed by scientists to investigate these phenomena. Students will be encouraged to think like a scientist by using case studies from India. They will develop an appreciation for natural history and an understanding of biodiversity and the factors which affect the richness and diversity of life in different regions. 
a broad exposure to biodiversity in India will be complemented by a deeper exploration of biodiversity in their local region and an introduction to systematic practices of studying biodiversity through taxonomy and nomenclature. Students will engage with units on the impact of climate change and the importance of conservation efforts. Through the theme of biodiversity and biogeography, students will develop general capacities for quantitative reasoning, interpretation of graphs, computation of summary statistics, as well as observation skills through activities requiring them to identify and classify species in their surroundings. Students will also be made aware of careers in ecology, sustainability and other allied fields and how citizens can contribute to scientific research. Content Area 2 The Unity of Life through this content area, students will engage with the common structures and processes that underpin all of biology. This area will include a discussion of cell theory and our current understanding of cellular structures and processes. Subsequently, students will explore important classes of molecules that are constituents of cells and the functions they perform. In this context, students will learn about the identification of DNA as genetic material. This will be followed by a historical account of genetics and how Mendel identified the fundamental principles of heredity and how they were rediscovered later. An essential aspect that must be discussed is how evolutionary processes can provide a framework for investigating biological phenomena across scales. This will involve an overview of the development of the theory of evolution by natural selection through the work of Darwin and Wallace, a discussion of the modern synthesis, and an introduction to phylogenetics through the study of the tree of life. Students will also be introduced to molecular biology, central dogma, genetic code and gene regulation. Case studies, for example antimicrobial resistance, will be used to illustrate the importance of an integrated understanding of biological systems in modern life sciences. Students will become familiar with concepts that are essential to study any biological system. They will also appreciate that scientific theories and ideas take time to develop and that there is value in understanding the historical text of their origin. Page 484 Content Area 3 Organismal Biology Through this content area, students will explore many aspects of the biology of non-human organisms, microbes, fungi, plants, animals using an evolutionary framework. Representative examples of development and simple illustrations of the genetics of the body will be given along with a small set of topics related to the physiology and anatomy of plants and animals. Topics in ecology and biology of food production will be covered including population, community and behavioral ecology, energy flows and the interaction between different species. A diverse set of examples spanning the tree of life will be used to illustrate concepts. Food production, food security, including challenges of climate change and diseases, the role of biotechnology and sustainability, resource use, environmental impact will be discussed. Students will be encouraged to draw connections between food security challenges and physiological 
and ecological constraints. Content Area 4 Agriculture and Animal Husbandry Through this content area, students will explore commercially important organisms along with some examples of the developmental biology, anatomy and physiology of these organisms. The role of breeding and biotechnology will be discussed, followed by ecological and environmental constraints and challenges to food production. Students will study the topic of disease management and the possibilities of biocontrol. They will recognize why an understanding of physiology and an ecological sensibility is essential for sustainable food production. Content Area 5 Human Biology Through this content area, students will explore the evolutionary history of the genus Homo and the Human Genome Project. Thereafter, they will learn about major organ systems in a manner that connects with discussions of the genome and concepts of physiology and evolution, as well as health and well-being. After discussions on the importance of diet and nutrition, an overview of communicable and non-communicable diseases will be provided. Coverage of diseases will be accompanied by methods of preventive care, diagnosis, the biology behind administering medication and treatments, and the role of pharmaceutical companies. Given the age group, concerns of reproductive health, mental health, substance abuse, and addiction will be explored. And addiction will be explored. Students will be made aware of many careers related to human health. They will also explore the connection between individual health and planetary health and why one must view health from a community perspective rather than just an individual one. 10.2.2 Chemistry This is an illustration for chemistry. 10.2.2.1 Principles for Designing Courses in Chemistry The aim of teaching chemistry is to progressively build a career framework that gives a coherent overview of the subject, explain why it matters, and shows how different areas of content are connected. The courses for chemistry must be designed keeping the given points in mind. Page 485 A. Students will be equipped with tools to begin understanding how chemistry works rather than knowledge of the facts of chemistry. B. They will develop the necessary conceptual foundations and at the same time develop an overview that is a sufficiently broad introduction to the discipline. C. They will be able to understand and represent chemical phenomena at three levels, macroscopic, molecular and symbolic, to identify patterns and form connections that underlie all chemical phenomena. D. They will recognize that chemists are uniquely qualified to contribute meaningfully to frontier research areas related to climate change, environmental issues, material science, biology and medicine. At this level, students must deal with content at an appropriate level of rigor to build a certain amount of comfort with using all three levels of representation to enable the transition from facts enumerated through rote learning in a fragmented way to connecting phenomena at the molecular scale to those at the astronomical scale. Curriculum content must ensure that students have and recognize they have appropriate intellectual resources and know 
how to connect these resources as they construct and revise explanations or predictions. 10.2.2.2 Illustrative Content Areas in Chemistry Given here are illustrative content areas for chemistry in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 Structure, Bonding and Properties in Chemistry Through this content area, Students will develop a perspective that sees the universe as a collection of fundamental particles and their combinations. It will lead them to realization that properties of materials, compounds and molecules of life are all consequences of the fundamental principles that chemistry establishes. The interconnectedness of structure to bonding patterns and thereby their influence on observable properties will be elucidated and the connections will be explicitly made. As concepts are accumulated, the connections to the real world will become progressively more comprehensive. This model fundamentally removes the inherent abstraction in chemistry via observations of the wonders of science that the student can see, smell, hear, taste and touch. This area will cover the structure of the atom and its electronic distributions, the classification of elements in the periodic table and their periodic properties. Building on these properties, the combination of elements to form compounds, the nature of these bonds, and molecular geometry will be detailed. To illustrate, principles of structure and bonding hydrocarbons and their functional groups will be introduced alongside their variations in connectivity and spatial arrangement via isomerism and the structure property relationships in transition metal complexes will be included. Content Area 2 Principles of Reactivity Through this content area, students will focus on the study of chemical systems, how and why the reactions occur, drawing upon the properties of elements, bonding and structure learned previously. They will focus on the application of sub-microscopic models of matter and structure property relationships to explain, predict and control chemical behavior. Students will be introduced to concepts regarding chemical thermodynamics, acid-base equilibria and chemical kinetics from the perspective of the transformation of matter and the underlying principles that govern the reactivity of chemical substances. Reactions of organic and inorganic compounds will be used to illustrate the concepts of enthalpy, free energy, equilibrium and kinetics of reactions. Page 486 Students will explore patterns of reactivity in organic and inorganic systems, functional group chemistry, kinetics, mechanisms and, cat and catalysis. They will initiate the systematic study of the common classes of organic compounds, emphasizing theories of structure and reactivity. Students will consider and measure the energies and the rates of chemical reactions and predict the products. Through this content area, students will be able to connect observations of chemical reactivity at the macroscopic level with the changes at the molecular level and use principles studied to predict reactions and use these reactions to make modifications to small molecules. Content Area 3 Modern Applications of Chemistry 
it is essential to provide students with meaningful contexts in their life and provide a big picture of chemistry. Through this content area, students will have the space to integrate the essential concepts with applications of chemistry, thereby enabling them to realize the interrelatedness of chemistry, society and technology. They will explore synthetic approaches, analytical methods and structure property relationships of some vital chemicals needed or used in our daily lives in addition to the analysis of their impact on the environment. This includes natural substances such as biological macromolecules as well as anthropogenic chemicals such as drugs, food substances, colorants and cosmetics. It also includes a structural understanding of inorganic and hybrid materials. Students will examine classification, preparation methods, applications and the environmental concerns of polymers and gain insight and information on fuels and energy and the contribution of chemistry to sustainable energy technologies. Finally, students will focus on the structure and behavior of chemical compounds contributing to the biomedical and agricultural fields and the application of fundamental chemical principles to industrial manufacturing processes. 10.2.3 Physics this is an illustration for physics. 10.2.3.1 Principles for designing courses in physics. The aim of teaching physics is to enable students to explore the methods of physics and how theories are built and tested. They are intended to help students engage with the empirical nature of physics as well as how these theories help explain phenomena around them. The courses for physics must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will develop the ability to formulate scientific questions about their observations of and experiences in the real world. B. They will be able to make connections between their experiences and observations to what is transacted in the classroom and laboratory. C. They will develop the ability to represent real-world phenomena in mathematical terms. D. They will develop the ability to test laws and theories of physics through observation and experimentation. An interdisciplinary approach integrating mathematics, biology and chemistry must be taken. Content from mathematics such as calculus, vector analysis and trigonometry must be included as and when necessary. Page 487 10.2.3.2 Illustrative content areas. Given here are illustrative content areas for physics in grades 11 and 12. Content area 1. Mechanics. Through this content area, students will focus on the essential concepts related to motion in one and two dimensions, force and mechanical work, various forms of energy and the conservation of energy illustrated through various examples. Differential calculus will be taught as part of the unit on motion. Some notions of energy and length scales in matter will be discussed through examples in everyday life, thus introducing students briefly to some of the modern ideas in condensed matter and biological physics. Applications of these concepts to other disciplines will be emphasized through various examples. 
Here, the focus will be on giving a hands-on experience and relating this to the phenomena in everyday life. Content Area 2 Electricity and Magnetism Through this content area, students will get a broad overview of the main phenomena, including the historically significant experiments starting from Gilbert's work on static electricity and properties of magnets to Hertz's experiment confirming the existence of electromagnetic waves. Related theoretical ideas will also be covered along with familiarizing students with basic experimental techniques and relevant foundational mathematical concepts. For example, students will learn the techniques of basic integral calculus that are needed for understanding and applying Gauss law and Ampere's law. This content will help students appreciate the links between all the given aspects and understand certain everyday natural phenomena and technologies from the lens of physical principles. Content Area 3 – Waves and Optics Through this content area, students will build on ideas related to mechanics and electricity and magnetism. This will involve building a connection between various topics in physics and also a bit of repetition of those topics which will help students assimilate and appreciate various phenomena. Topics include the pendulum and spring mass system as simple harmonic oscillators, basic acoustics, the Doppler effect, ray optics and optical instruments and finally ideas in wave optics keeping in mind interference and diffraction. Content Area 4 Thermodynamics and Properties of Matter Through this content area students will engage with coherent and integrated handling of thermodynamics, properties of materials an essential topics such as collection of particles, basic gas laws such as the law of Avogadro, energy and energy transfer and radiation as a mode of energy transfer. They will learn about hydrostatics, motion of fluids, ideal gas laws, laws of thermodynamics, phase changes, Modes of heat and energy transfer including black body radiation and the photoelectric effect. Page 488 Section 10.3 Mathematics and Computational Thinking Mathematics and Computational Thinking will illustratively offer core mathematics, business mathematics, Advanced Mathematics and Computer Science 10.3.1 Core Mathematics This is an illustration for Core Mathematics 10.3.1.1 Principles for Designing Courses in Core Mathematics The aim of teaching Core Mathematics is to develop the capacity of students to think logically and analytically and at the same time discover their own strengths and interests in the discipline. The courses for core mathematics must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will engage in mathematical processes such as reasoning, modeling, visualization, problem solving and formal communication while engaging with the content areas of mathematics such as algebra and geometry. B. They will develop an appreciation of the structure of mathematics as a discipline, making connections between areas of mathematics as well as with other disciplines of study. C. They will be introduced to powerful ideas of mathematics 
such as infinite sums, limits and probability towards developing a deeper understanding of mathematics as a discipline. D. They will develop a healthy predisposition to formal problem solving as an opportunity to promote self-learning and reflection as well as the application of concept learning. Students must be exposed to a structure that places importance on problem solving through building concepts, skills, processes and metacognition. They should progress in the content areas of number systems, algebra, geometry and trigonometry and engage with coordinate geometry, calculus and probability and statistics. New representations help students make connections between algebra and geometry. They must also get opportunities for modeling. 10.3.1.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given here are illustrative content areas for core mathematics in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 Mathematical Foundations Through this content area, students will strengthen their capacity for mathematical reasoning and be able to understand the need for proof as well as what constitutes proof. As well as what constitutes proof. A powerful proof technique, the principle of mathematical induction is introduced. Students learn the language of sets, functions and relations. They engage with a range of functions that students may have already encountered in algebra geometry and with newer functions like trigonometry to understand the domain and range in each case. Content Area 2 Algebra and Geometry Students learn to go back and forth between geometric objects on the plane and their algebraic expressions. Linear equations and their solutions are related to their geometric visualization. Page 489 Their representation by matrices provides a powerful tool for computation and helps the transition to three dimensions. Geometric objects such as parabolas, ellipses, circles and hyperbolas are studied as loci of points in motion. Content Area 3 – Calculus An informal understanding of the notion of limit leads to a similar notion of continuity which is adequate to understand the mathematics of motion and rate of change. Students learn the gradient of a curve at a point and the notion of a second derivative with its application to maxima-minima problems. Integration is understood as the reverse process of differentiation. Students learn to evaluate definite integrals and use this to compute the area of a region bounded by a curve and lines parallel to the axis. Content Area 4 Probability and Statistics Students learn to select between ways of representing raw data and explain why. They learn to use measures of central tendency and variation and use these to compare two sets of data. They learn permutations and combinations and use them in calculating probabilities of events. The notion of sample space is introduced and students learn to set up one. The basic laws of probability independence of events and conditional probability are learned. Section 10.4 Art Education The art education curricular area will illustratively offer Indian classical music, folk music, contemporary music, theatre, puppetry, sculpture, fine arts, folk painting, 
graphic design, motion pictures, photography, and textile designing. Art education aims to help students achieve more depth in a chosen art form, while also providing flexibility to explore related areas of study. Content should be based on the art and culture of their region and by considering the resources and infrastructure that can be set in place for these programs to operate efficiently. Students who choose art education as one of their areas of study will need to decide which of the two categories they would like to specialize in – art practice or art appreciation and management. Within these categories, they will choose a form – visual arts, theatre, music or dance and movement. Based on this choice, students must engage largely with content in the chosen category, with some engagement with content from the other. For example, if a student chooses art practice, they will focus on content related to this category and also study some content in art appreciation and management. This is to ensure that the student gains breadth in both art appreciation and management and art practice while allowing them to go deeper in one of the categories. Page 490 10.4.1 Art Practice This is an illustration for the category of art practice. 10.4.1.1 Principles for designing courses in art practice The aim of art practice in secondary stage is to develop capacities in a specific art form and refine students' aesthetic sensibilities. They will learn the structure of the form, develop an appreciation for it and be able to creatively express themselves through it. The courses for art practice must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will engage in embodied and experiential learning through the making, thinking and appreciation processes. B. They will undergo rigorous practice in a chosen form. C. They will be able to link practice to theory, art history and contemporary issues relevant to each art form. 10.4.1.2 Illustrative Content Areas The table given here contains an illustrative set of areas for study in art practice. Table 10.41 The table given here states areas for study in art practice. Under this heading are four columns of four various art forms. The first column is of visual arts that includes drawing, painting, sculpture and ceramics, textile arts and design, Indian decorative arts and crafts traditions, photography, graphic design and new media. And finally, film, video and animation. In column 2, we have the theatre art form that includes theatre for social change, introduction to acting, theatre in education, participatory theatre, Indian folk theatre, Indian classical theatre, Theatre Design and Stage Craft Script Writing for Theatre The third type of art form is Music It includes Indian Classical Vocal Music Indian Classical Instrumental Music Indian Folk Music Indian Light Classical and Film Music Orchestra, Bands and ensembles, recording, editing and production, songwriting, music 
and new media. The fourth column is of dance and movement. This type of art form includes Indian classical dance, Indian folk dance, yoga and Indian martial arts, contemporary dance and movement, costume and stage design for dance and movement, dance and movement choreography, dance for physical fitness and well-being, dance drama. Now is given another table that illustrates content areas for visual arts in the category of art practice. Page 491 Table 10.42 This table which is given here states the content areas for visual arts. It has got three columns for three different headings. First heading is Category. Second heading is Content Areas. The third heading is Other Related Content Areas. In the first category, we include Art Practice, Art Practice, Art Appreciation and Management and finally Art Practice Elective. The corresponding content areas for these will be Drawing, Sculpture, Visual Arts in India, Past to Contemporary and finally Textile Arts and Design. Other related content areas are Indian Decorative Art and Crafts Traditions, Theatre Design and Stage Craft, Film, Video, Animation, Portfolio Development. Content Area 1 – Drawing Drawing serves as a foundation for a wide range of creative disciplines like painting, sculpture, architecture, visual communication, engineering or fashion design. The ability to draw well contributes to developing effective communication skills. Through this content area, Students will learn key skills and techniques across artistic mediums and applications. Content Area 2 – Sculpture Through this content area, students will learn to develop their own artistic ideas and expression by creating sculptural objects. They will learn to refine their skills and techniques in any medium of their choice – clay, wood, fabric, mixed media through rigorous practice. Content Area 3 – Visual Arts in India – Past to Contemporary Through this content area, students will be introduced to the history of Indian art through selective examples from prehistory to contemporary times. Every example will provide students with an opportunity to study the aesthetic qualities of the artwork as well as understand the social and cultural context of artists through history. Students will also have space to explore archives and find artwork or artifacts of importance on their own. They will learn to interpret artworks, develop perspective, and appreciate diverse artistic expressions. Content Area 4 – Textile Arts and Design Through this content area, students will be introduced to the world of textiles and their diverse forms and functions in our lives. Students can experiment with various materials, fibers, and fabrics, understand their properties of color, texture, insulation, opacity and longevity and explore their applications in multiple contexts – clothing, sports gear, safety gear, interior design and architecture – as a medium for artistic expression. Based on the local traditions, students could be introduced to techniques of embroidery, 
knitting, weaving, applique, textile dyeing, and quilting. Page 492. Page 492.10.4.2. Art Appreciation and Management. This is an illustration for art appreciation and management. 10.4.2.1 Principles for designing courses in art appreciation and management. The aim of teaching art appreciation and management is to develop among students the capacity for appreciation of the arts through engaging with theoretical, historical and contemporary perspectives. They will also develop an understanding of managing art exhibits, conservation, curation and event management in the arts. The courses for art appreciation and management must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will acquire knowledge of art history and aesthetics. B. They will refine their skills of interpretation, writing, documentation, community engagement and organization. C. They will develop a meaningful appreciation for the arts. 10.4.2.2 Illustrative Content Areas An illustrative set of areas for study in art appreciation and management is given in the table over here. Table 10.43 This table over here states the areas for study in art appreciation and management. It includes four different columns for four different art forms. The first column is of visual arts, which includes visual art in India past to contemporary, visual art from around the world, Past to Contemporary Crafts Traditions from India and the World History of Visual Design and Communication 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 The second column is of Theatre Art Form that includes Indian classical theatre and its theories, theatre traditions from around the world, Indian folk theatre, and theories of acting. The third column belongs to the music art form, which includes Indian classic music, which includes Indian classical music theory, Musical traditions from around the world. Folk music traditions from India and the world. And study of Indian musical instruments. The fourth and last column is of dance and movement art forms. It includes Indian classical dance and its theories. Classical dance traditions from around the world. Folk dance and movement traditions from India and the world. And finally, history and traditions of yoga and Indian martial arts. The subjects that are common to all forms are 5. Indian aesthetics and Ras theory 6. Museums and archives, conservation and documentation 7. Curation and event management in the arts. And 8. Portfolio development, particularly for students who wish to apply for higher education in the arts. Page 493. The table given here illustrates content areas for music in the category of art appreciation and management. Table 10.44. This table which is given here, it states the content areas for art appreciation and management in music. The table has three different columns. In the first column, the various categories are stated. 
in the second column are the different content areas. The third column belongs to other related content areas. Column 1 Category Art Appreciation and Management Content Area Museums and Archives Column 1 Category Art Appreciation and Management Content Area Indian Classical Music Theory Column 1 Category Art Practice Content Area is Indian Folk Music in column 1, under category Art Appreciation and Management Elective, the content area is Portfolio Development. And finally, other related content areas are Indian Aesthetics and Rasa Theory and Curation and Art Event Management. Content Area 1 Museums and Archives through this content area, students will be introduced to the importance of museums and archives in preserving and promoting art and culture. Students will study museum collections and their resources through visits to local museums as well as online resources of museums across India and the world. Students will also learn about the various processes of maintenance conservation, research and outreach programs that museums undertake. Students will be required to work on their own projects to design, visualize and present a select collection of artifacts, objects or documents in a museum. Content Area 2 Indian Classical Music Theory Through this content area, Students will be introduced to the philosophy, canons and compositional structure that characterize different aspects of Indian music. Students will learn about different shrutis and scales, frequencies of notes, arrangements of notes in ragas, emotions and rasas evoked through ragas, tal patterns, their styles and combinations as well as important composers, music theorists and developments that have occurred in Indian classical music through history. Content Area 3 – Indian Folk Music Through this content area, students will be introduced to the practice of folk yawners from different parts of India. Students will explore and practice different styles of folk music to develop an understanding of musical styles, themes, instruments and performance techniques that are used in folk music. Content Area 4 – Portfolio Development Through this content area, students will be introduced to the concept, design and development of portfolios for the purpose of external viewership. Students will be exposed to various samples of portfolios to analyze their design, structure, content and effectiveness in representing an artist's work. Through such exercises, they will be guided to conceptualize their own portfolio, make selections from their existing portfolios, and create new works to strengthen them. They will write about their own motivations and ideas for their artworks and develop a visual consolidation and presentation of the portfolio. Page 493 Section 10.5 Vocational Education the vocational education curricular area will offer subjects to be aligned to the National Skills Qualifications Framework, NSQF, within the three forms of work. Illustratively, the curricular area will offer agriculture, gardening, automotive, automobile servicing, machining, electronics, community health, accounting services, data entry and management, banking services, retail services and textile and garments. 
10.5.1.1 Principles for Designing Courses in Vocational Education The aim of vocational education is to enable students to acquire the necessary understanding and skills related to a specific job role. They will be equipped to take up a job after leaving school if they so wish. With this in mind, the courses will be aligned with levels 3 and 4 of the NSQF or higher. It must be noted that NSQF is an outcomes-based framework and the levels are not tied to years of study. The courses for vocational education must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will acquire the necessary knowledge to perform routine jobs of their choice. B. They will demonstrate necessary skills and follow routine processes based on an understanding of appropriate rules and equipment. C. They will acquire the vocabulary of their chosen vocation. D. They will acquire a basic understanding of the social, political and natural environment the vocation is located in. Schools will offer courses in at least one vocation in the three forms of work. Engaging with life and nature, engaging with machines and materials, and engaging with human beings. Students will engage with actual practice as far as possible. This will be enabled within schools through setting up appropriate workshops with available resources. In addition, students will undergo internships as well as an apprenticeship in their chosen vocation. These will enable students to experience working under supervision and develop an understanding of the workplace and its place in the larger world. The combined time spent on internship and apprenticeship should be at least 40% of the total time allotted for this curricular area. Box 10.51 On this page is a box that states, It is important to note that in this NCF, Apprenticeship is used as an essential pedagogical approach to gain know-how knowledge while the students are in school. This must not be seen from the lens of the Apprentice Act 1961. See Part C, Chapter 9, Page 495, 10.5.1.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given here is a list of illustrative areas of study. One area has been elaborated for each of the forms given here in this table. Table 10.51 In this table given are three columns. The three columns, three different headings, such as First, work with life forms. Second, Work with machines and materials. And third, work in human services. Let's talk about column 1 with the heading Work with Life Forms. Dairy Farming Dairy farming includes introduction to dairy farming, maintaining healthy performance of livestock, workplace culture and practices, and Apprenticeship. While when you want to work with machines and materials, you will have to undergo agricultural machine operation given here in column 2. It includes introduction to agricultural machines, new technology and the future of agricultural machinery. It also includes workplace culture and practices and Apprenticeship and the third column is Frontline Health Workers. If you wish to work in human services, you should have the knowledge about Frontline Health Workers. That includes Introduction to Community Health and Public Health, 
roles and responsibilities of frontline health workers, workplace culture and practices, and apprenticeship. Now let's talk about sericulture that comes under the heading Work with Life Forms. In sericulture, the items that are included are Introduction to sericulture Production of silk from young age and old age silkworms Workplace culture and practices and Apprenticeship Now is the turn of Irrigation Service Technician which comes under the heading Work with Machines and Materials. Irrigation Service Technician includes Introduction to Irrigation, Operation and Maintenance of Irrigation Systems, Workplace Culture and Practices along with Apprenticeship, Vision Technician. If you wish to work in Human Services, you should also know the work of vision technician that has to do basic introduction to ophthalmology. That includes basic introduction to ophthalmology, making optical prescriptions, workplace culture and practices and of course apprenticeship. Small poultry farming comes when working with life forms. Small poultry farming comes under the heading of work with life forms. It includes introduction to small poultry farming, rearing and maintaining poultry birds, workplace culture and practices and apprenticeship. In the second column, under the heading of work with machines and materials comes plumber general. Plumber general includes Basic sanitary fittings and fixtures, installation and repair, advanced sanitary fittings and fixtures, installation and repair, workplace culture and processes, and of course, apprenticeship. The third category is Heritage Tour Guide. Heritage Tour Guide comes under the category of Work in Human Sciences. If you want to become a heritage tour guide, you should know the role and relevance of a heritage tour guide, managing different kinds of heritage tours, workplace culture and practices, and apprenticeship. Next job title is Soil and Water Testing Lab Assistant for Agriculture. It includes Introduction to Soil and Water Testing. Managing plant nutrients, workplace culture and practices, and apprenticeship. This comes under the heading of Work with Life Forms. Next job title is High Tech Technical Services that come under the heading of Work with Machines and Materials. High Tech Technical Services include Kinds of equipment and uses, for example, drones, computing part of machines, mobile communication infrastructure, and basic design and diagnosis. It also includes physical and computing solutions, escalation and remote support, workplace culture and practices, and apprenticeship. Our next job title is Beauty Therapist that comes under the heading of Work in Human Services. To become a Beauty Therapist, you should know Introduction to Beauty and Wellness Industry and Beauty Therapy. You should have Introduction to Beauty and Wellness Industry and Beauty Therapy. You should be knowing basics of different kinds of beauty services, workplace culture and practice, and of course, apprenticeship. The next job title is very much interesting. It is gardening that comes under the heading of work with life forms. To become a gardener, you should know how to manage gardens and nurseries, landscaping and ornamentation, workplace culture and practices, along with apprenticeship. 
in the next job title, which is of a field technician, washing machine, air conditioning and refrigerator. You should be well versed with basic electricity and electronics. You should know repair and maintenance of washing machine, air conditioner, refrigerator, workplace culture and practices along with apprenticeship. The yoga instructor that comes under the heading work in human services. To become a yoga instructor, you should know philosophy and practice of yoga. You should also know about yoga and the human body, workplace culture and practices and of course apprenticeship. Page 495 Floriculture Floriculture includes fundamentals of floriculture, nursery and seed production. To become a floriculturist, you should have knowledge about simple and tongue layering, ground layering, air layering or gooty, workplace culture and practices and of course apprenticeship is always there. Auto service technician comes under the heading of work with machines and materials. To become an auto service technician, you should have knowledge about introduction to engineering geometrics and drawing, serviceability, maintenance, replacement or repair of engine components, workplace culture and practices along with apprenticeship. The next job title is Hairstylist. To become a professional hairstylist, you should have introduction to hair care. You should know basics of hair styling, workplace culture and practices along with apprenticeship. Mushroom cultivation is another interesting job option. To do mushroom cultivation, medicinal and nutritional value of different types of mushrooms should be known. One should also know mushroom cultivation and the economic benefits of growing mushrooms, workplace culture and practices, and of course, apprenticeship. The next title is another interesting job. It is called baking. To choose the job of a baker, you should know baking bread, pastries, cakes, chocolates and desserts. You should have knowledge about quality and marketing. You should know workplace culture and practices along with apprenticeship. Dietitian is another good job title that anyone would like to opt in these days. It comes under the heading Work with Human Sciences. To become a dietitian, you should have knowledge about food habits, discipline and a balanced diet. You should be able to acknowledge food chart for pregnant women, kids, adults, anti-aging food habits, healthy food habits for women, workplace culture and practices, and apprenticeship. Another interesting job option is sheep or goat farming. It comes under the heading of Work with life forms. To do sheep or goat farming, different varieties of sheep or goat and seasonality in sheep or goat farming should be known. Developing a business model, availing government support should be known. Workplace culture and practices are a must along with apprenticeship. Next job title is Jam, Jelly and Ketchup Processing. It comes under the heading of Work with machines and materials. To do jam, jelly and ketchup processing, one must have knowledge about fruit and vegetable processing. One must know about quality and marketing of jam, jelly and ketchups. One must know about workplace culture and practices along with apprenticeship. Last but not the least is the job title of Home Health Aid. It comes under the heading of Work in Human Sciences. To become a home health aide, 
clinical skills are essential in providing basic health care services. Infection control, hygiene, safety, usage of protective devices, workplace culture and practices, apprenticeship should be thoroughly known. Schools should offer areas of study that respond to multiple considerations weighed adequately. For example, aspirations of students, school's ability to transact the curriculum, local needs, future needs of society. Also, it is important for school education to have the widest possible range of such offerings and not be restricted by any constraint or restraint. For example, areas of work where actual employment is governed by any licensure requirements does not imply that that area of work cannot be studied in schools, only that the school study should be integrated within the licensure requirements or that the student will have to fulfill the licensure conditions after graduating from school in order to be eligible for employment. Equally, since the NSQF levels are not tied to years of study, it should be possible to prepare students for higher NSQF levels if required by the licensure requirements. Work with life forms, gardening. This is an illustration for work with life forms. Given over here are illustrative content areas for gardening in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 – Managing Gardens and Nurseries Students will be introduced to the care and maintenance of gardens and nurseries. Gardens will include small home gardens and pot gardening. Nurseries will include those at both small and large scale. Students will learn to grow and maintain plants grown in the region from the preparation of parts or soil to nutrition and irrigation. They will identify and correctly use the appropriate tools and equipment. They will also understand the marketing of plants, including flowers. Page 497 Content Area 2 Landscaping and Ornamentation Students will learn to visualize small and large spaces as aesthetically pleasing gardens. They will learn how to identify ornamental plants suitable for the climate in the region, where to source them and how to grow them. They will learn how to establish and maintain lawns, ranging in size from a small patch to a large park. Students will also be able to identify and place elements, for example, bird baths, garden furniture, wind chimes, stones or rocks, arches, waterfall, ornamental pots, trellises, follies that help make a garden functional and attractive. Content Area 3 Workplace Culture and Practices Students will engage with the culture of the workplace as well as practices specific to the nature of the vocation they have chosen. This will be enabled through on-site exposure, videos and discussions in the classroom. On-site exposure will be through internships at relevant different facilities where students will get a chance to observe and interact with persons working there. They will also be required to view videos of different kinds of facilities, for example, practices related to the maintenance of large parks, ornamental gardens, gardens and heritage monuments. Discussions will help them consolidate their observations and draw general principles of work. This will be conducted jointly by the teacher and resource persons. Apprenticeship Students will work as part-time apprentices in an actual place of work. This will be one of the facilities in which they will be placed as interns. This will enable them to have an on-site work experience and understand the different factors involved in actually doing a job.
It will help them become aware of the culture and language of work and the factors affecting its functioning. Students will gain experiential skills and knowledge of the work under the supervision of a mentor. The mentors will be identified persons already working in the chosen facility with sufficient work expertise who will undergo a short course to prepare them to work with students. Students will also be required to maintain a portfolio containing products they have created or processes they have followed. Work with machines and materials, jam, jelly and ketchup processing technician. This is an illustration for work with machines and materials. Given over here are illustrative content areas for a jam, jelly and ketchup processing technician in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 – Fruit and Vegetable Processing Students will be introduced to the possibilities and processes of fruit and vegetable processing as well as the science that underlies it. They will learn different techniques to prepare jams, jellies and ketchup. They will be given a basic introduction to food microbiology so that they understand how food is preserved and what causes it to spoil. They will learn how to prepare, clean and maintain materials as well as work areas for processing. Page 498 Content Area 2 Quality and Marketing Students will gain an understanding of food quality and sanitation laws for processed food products. They will learn how to correctly package jams, jellies and ketchups and maintain necessary documents and records. Students will also understand concepts related to occupational health and hygiene and basic first aid in case of accidents. They will learn about appropriate pricing and also about channels through which processed fruit and vegetables can be sold for different target groups. Content Area 3 – Workplace Culture and Practices Students will engage with the culture of the workplace as well as practices specific to the nature of the vocation they have chosen. This will be enabled through on-site exposure, videos and discussions in the classroom. On-site exposure will be through internships at relevant different facilities where students will get a chance to observe and interact with persons working there. They will also be required to view videos of different kinds of facilities. For example, they can view processes in large, automated facilities and small businesses run from home. Discussions will help them consolidate their observations and draw general principles of work. The teacher and resource persons will jointly conduct this. Apprenticeship Students will serve as part-time apprentices in an actual place of work. This will be one of the facilities in which they were placed as interns. This will enable them to have an on-site work experience and understand the different factors involved in actually doing a job. It will help them become aware of the culture and language of work and the factors affecting its functioning. Students will gain experiential skills and knowledge of the work under the supervision of a mentor. The mentors will be identified persons already working in the chosen facility with sufficient work expertise who will undergo a short course to prepare them to work with students. Students will also be required to maintain a portfolio containing products they have created or processes they have followed. Work in Human Services Tour Guide This is an illustration for work in human services. Given over here are illustrative content areas for tour guide in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 – Role and Relevance of a Tour Guide 
students will be introduced to the tourism industry and its importance for individuals and the local economy. And its importance for individuals and the local economy. They will understand the context in which the tourism industry operates and its potential as a vocation. They will also understand the job role of tour guides and their place or role in the tourism industry. Content Area 2 Managing Different Kinds of Tours Students will engage with a variety of tours in which the tour guide plays an important role. For example, pilgrimages, wellness and medical tours, tours for leisure and recreation, gastronomy tours, cultural tours and tours for sporting events. While understanding the specific requirements for each of the different kinds of tours, they will be encouraged to draw general principles related to communication with clients and colleagues, gender and age-sensitive practices, health and hygiene, safety practices, etiquette and hospitable conduct. Page 499 Content Area 3 Workplace Culture and Practices Students will engage with the culture of the workplace as well as practices specific to the nature of the vocation they have chosen. This will be enabled through on-site exposure, videos and discussions in the classroom. On-site exposure will be through internships at relevant different facilities, where students will get a chance to observe and interact with persons working there. They will also be required to view videos of different kinds of facilities. For example, they can watch a city tour, a heritage tour, or a tour on a train visiting different places. Discussions will help them consolidate their observations and draw general principles of work. The teacher and resource persons will jointly conduct these. Apprenticeship Students will serve as part-time apprentices in an actual place of work. This will be one of the facilities in which they were placed as interns. This will enable them to have an on-site work experience and understand the different factors involved in actually doing a job. It will help them become aware of the culture and language of work and the factors affecting its functioning. Students will gain experiential skills and knowledge of the work under the supervision of a mentor. The mentors will be identified persons already working in the chosen facility with sufficient work expertise who will undergo a short course to prepare them to work with students. Students will also be required to maintain a portfolio containing products they have created or processes they have followed. Section 10.6 Physical Education and Well-Being in grades 11 and 12 of the secondary stage, the NCF caters to three broad categories of students who may wish to pursue physical education and well-being in different forms after completing school. A. Students who want to continue sports and physical activity for recreational purposes. Such students can also be nodal persons for physical educational knowledge for a community. This group can take up physical education for community wellness. Illustratively, courses that could be offered in this category include yoga and lifestyle. B. Students who are interested in taking up sports-based vocational opportunities in growing areas such as sports education and fitness industry, sports management, sports analytics, sports psychology or even allied medical fields such as sports physiotherapy. This category can take up physical education as a vocation. Illustratively, Courses that could be offered in this category include physical education for children with disabilities. C. 
students who are interested in taking up playing sports professionally or are interested in allied fields of professional sports. These are students who have already achieved some proficiency in a particular sport, game or practice like yoga or tai chi. Such students will have the option to pursue it further, develop advanced skills and compete at the highest level. This category can take up physical education for a professional sports person. Illustratively, courses that could be offered in this category include sports and nutrition and biomechanics and sports. Page 500 10.6.1 Physical Education for Community Wellness This is an illustration of physical education for community wellness. 10.6.1.1 Principles for Designing Courses for Physical Education for Community Wellness the aim of teaching physical education for community wellness is to prepare students to continue their interest in sports and physical activity from a recreational and wellness point of view. Students will build their capacities to contribute to community wellness through enabling community events related to sports and physical activities. The courses for physical education for community wellness must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will build a foundation for understanding the different aspect of sports and physical activities as well as wellness. B. They will be introduced to the domain of community wellness. C. They will be prepared to engage with members of the community in the capacity of a coach and manager. 10.6.1.2 Illustrative content areas Given over here are illustrations of content areas Physical Education for Community Wellness Content Area 1 Sports and Fitness and Introduction through this content area, students will be introduced to basic human anatomy and physiology and its connection with physical activity and fitness. In addition, aspects of nutrition, injury prevention and basic first aid will also be included. Content Area 2 Community Coaching for a Chosen Sport through this content area, students will be prepared to develop capacities for engaging in team sports for community development. Basic coaching skills relevant to the sport and the interconnection between developing life skills through team sports will be the focus. Content Area 3 Sports and Fitness Advanced Basics Through this content area, Students will be introduced to the practices required for strength and conditional training. Maintaining strength, endurance and flexibility is necessary for any sport or physical activity. Students will get an understanding of how to develop these capacities in other persons, including the use of practices like yoga for developing strength and flexibility. Content Area 4 Sports Management Basic Through this content area, students will be introduced to different aspects of managing teams for participating in sporting events. These sporting events are often important aspects of building a community around sports. Students will engage with team management, event management, resource management, sourcing and maintaining equipment and playing areas and some aspects of sports promotion like sponsorships, endorsements and so on. Page 501 10.6.2 Physical Education as a Vocation This is an illustration for physical education as a vocation. 10.6.2.1 Principles for Designing Courses for Physical Education as a Vocation 
The aim of teaching physical education as a vocation is to develop capacities and skills to be able to work in vocations based on sports and fitness. Students will be introduced to various options available in sports, fitness and wellness domain. The courses must be designed based on the given principles. A. Students will acquire a holistic view of sports, fitness and wellness practices. B. They will develop an understanding of the physiological, nutritional, socio-emotional and ethical aspects of sports, fitness and wellness. C. They will develop capacities in at least one form of vocation connected to sports, fitness and wellness. Since there are multiple growing areas in this domain, a specific focus could be offered within a content area. 10.6.2.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given over here are illustrations of content areas for physical education as a vocation. Content Area 1 History of Sports and Wellness in India and the World Through this content area, students will be introduced to the rich heritage of practices related to sports, fitness and wellness in the Indian subcontinent. It will also give an overview of how these practices have travelled to other countries. Students will be introduced to a few key systems of fitness and wellness practices across the globe, along with sports that originated in India and in different parts of the world. Content Area 2 Sports and Fitness Advanced Basics Through this content area, Students will go deeper into the practices required for strength and conditioning training. Maintaining strength, endurance and flexibility is necessary for any sports or physical activity. Emphasis will be given on giving students an understanding of how to develop these capacities in others. Students will also engage with the use of practices like yoga for developing strength and flexibility. They will also be introduced to malpractices and the problem of doping in sports. Content Area 3 – Focus on a Specific Aspect Through this content area, students will focus on one of the given options. A. Introduction to sports coaching in a particular sport. First, safeguarding in sports. Second, strength and conditioning. Third, teaching skills. Fourth, strategy and tactics in sports. Page 502. B. Introduction to sports officiating in a particular sport. First, Rules and Regulations of Sport Second, Sport Officiating Guidelines C. Introduction to Sports Education First, Safeguarding in Sports Second, Strength and Conditioning Third, Teaching Skills Fourth, Teaching Life Skills Through Sports D. Introduction to Sports Physiotherapy First, Human Anatomy and Physiology Second, Sports Injuries, Prevention and Management E. Introduction to Sports Management First, Operations and Planning in Event Management Second, Marketing, Sponsorships, Endorsements and Publicity Third, Finances and Accounting in Events Fourth, Team Management Fifth, Athlete Management And Sixth, Ethics in Sports F. Introduction to Sports Analytics and Statistics First, Strategy and Tactics in Sports Second, Basic Python Programming Third, Using Sports Data for Strategy G. Introduction to Sports Photography and Videography 
First, introduction to equipment and maintenance. Second, basics of photography. Third, action photography. H. Introduction to sports media and journalism. First, history of sports media and journalism. Second, journalism, ethics and norms. 10.6.3 Physical Education for a Professional Sports Person This is an illustration for physical education for a professional sports person. 10.6.3.1 Principles for Designing Courses for Physical Education for a Professional Sports Person the aim of teaching physical education for a professional sports person is to strengthen the capacities and skills in students towards pursuing sports and physical activities at a professional level. The assumption is that many of these students will already be undergoing coaching in their respective choice of sport and these courses will aid their development. Page 503 the courses must be designed keeping the given principles in mind. A. Students will engage with important aspects of the anatomy and physiology of the human body. B. They will develop skills to build their endurance, strength and flexibility through different systems. C. They will learn and apply techniques and strategies in a specific sport. Students must be offered specific content aligned to the specific sport or activity they have chosen to specialize in. 10.6.3.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given over here are illustrative content areas for physical education for a professional sports person. Since practice is particularly important component of this area of study, half the time should be allotted to individual practice and training. Content Area 1 – Sports and Fitness Advanced Basics Through this content area, students will engage with the practices required for strength and conditioning training, maintaining strength, Endurance and flexibility is necessary for any sports or physical activity. Students will get an understanding of how to develop these capacities and also use practices like yoga for developing strength and flexibility. Students will also be introduced to malpractices and the problem of doping in sports. Content Area 2 – Focus on a Specific Aspect through this content area, students will focus on a specific sport or physical activity that may be aligned with the sport they intend to pursue professionally or that is of deep interest to them. They will also be supported in building their individual capacity for playing sports. The focus areas could be focus on specific sport or physical activity. A. Basic skills and techniques in sport in a particular sport. B. Tactics and strategy in sport in a particular sport. C. Basics of pilots. D. Basics of Tai Chi. Individual. A. Pranayama and understanding Yoga Sutras. B. Endurance and cardiovascular training in a particular sport. C. Advanced strength and conditioning. Page 504. Section 10.7. Interdisciplinary areas. The interdisciplinary areas curricular area will illustratively offer business studies, accounting, sustainability and climate change, environmental education, media and journalism, family and community sciences, the current form of home science, Indian knowledge systems and legal studies. This list may be enhanced continually. Illustration of content areas sustainability and climate change and media and journalism is outlined over here. 
10.7.1 Sustainability and Climate Change This is an illustration for sustainability and climate change. 10.7.1.1 Principles for Designing Courses for Sustainability and Climate Change the aim of teaching sustainability and climate change is to enable in students a deeper engagement with environmental education and explore the interconnectedness with sustainability and climate change grounded in the Indian context. The courses for sustainability and climate change must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will engage with complex environmental problems without being overwhelmed by them. B. They will describe and summarize environmental challenges linking society and the environment. C. They will understand trade-offs and ethical dimensions of sustainability and climate change challenges. D. They will develop environmental literacy enabling them to engage in environmental action. Addressing environmental challenges requires an interdisciplinary perspective incorporating science, society, economy and politics. The content for sustainability and climate change must be developed using the framework of social environmental systems that conceptualizes environmental issues as complex, non-linear in cause and impact, subject to shocks and with tipping points. Central to the framework is equity and environmental justice which must be emphasized. Students must engage with sustainability and climate change challenges at different scales. They should learn both about the need for and limitations of individual versus systematic change and technological fix versus participatory action. They should also be involved in analyzing case studies of successful interventions at different scales that have addressed environmental problems without being overwhelmed by the complexity of the challenge. An important learning for students. Page 505 10.7.1.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given over here, are illustrative content areas for sustainability and climate change in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 Environmental Science from a Social Environmental Systems Perspective Environmental challenges can no longer be addressed by traditional approaches where there was a clear separation between pure science and social science. As humans, we are today an intrinsic part of our environment and our actions result in impacts on the environment and humanity. With this in mind, students will study about the threats to the earth, the interconnected nature of planetary boundaries and thresholds that are breached, as well as explore using the system's perspective to examine the tipping points. The need for going beyond individual behavioral change to requiring interventions at a systematic level for environmental sustainability will be emphasized. Students will also understand how the use of technology alone via new approaches to waste management or energy production cannot completely address sustainability objectives, which require working adaptively with people, culture, markets and policies. Content Area 2 Environmental Pollution – Air Air pollution is one of the major environmental challenges faced today with serious implications for human health. Students will understand concepts around air pollution such as meteorology, composition, SPM, NOx, SOx and sources industrial and vehicular. 
they will examine the effects of air pollution on plants, animals, as well as human health, the economic implications and issues of pollution and environmental justice. They will also examine air pollution control measures from technological to behavioral. Content Areas 3 Content Area 3 Biodiversity Students will start by refreshing concepts of biodiversity, ecosystems, species, natural landscapes, and why biodiversity is important for human existence on this earth. They will then understand the threats to biodiversity and how this has affected biodiversity at a global and national scale. The impacts of the loss of biodiversity linked to human dependence will also be included. This content area will provide a context to the history of biodiversity conservation with a focus on a critique of Indian legislation, laws, protected areas, community conservation and their implications. Students will also learn a few methods of documenting local diversity using tools such as citizen signs and people's biodiversity registers, PBRs. Content Area 4 – Climate Change Climate change is reshaping the world's environment with major implications for humanity in the coming decades. Students will be introduced to the science of the Earth's climate system and will explore issues of climate justice and changing weather patterns. They will be introduced to national and international agreements on climate change action and to positive steps that can be taken for climate change adaptation and mitigation at different levels from the local level to the national and international levels. Page 506 10.7.2 Media and Journalism 10.7.2.1 Principles for Designing Courses in Media and Journalism the aims of teaching media and journalism are to introduce students to media in its diverse forms, technology and function and to enable them to develop media literacy and production skills. The courses for media and journalism must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will critically examine the role of media in society through a set of broad-ranging engagement with diverse media forms, ranging from traditional media to the news space on social media. B. They will engage with a comprehensive history of media in its global and local scope. C. They will understand the basic elements of different mass media and acquire the basic tools of journalism. D. They will be able to produce media on a smaller scale using available tools and technology. 10.7.2.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given over here, are illustrative content areas for media and journalism in grades 11 and 12. Content Area 1 – Media Literacy Through this content area, students will be enabled to develop into discerning consumers and analytical appraisers of media texts. They will be equipped with knowledge about their working methods. They will be able to distinguish between different media and identify salient features of different media forms. Through real-world examples, they will explore the key characteristics that set each mass medium, including newspapers, radio, television, the internet and social media, apart from others. They will learn how our perceptions of the outside world are affected by popular media. Content Area 2 History of Media Through this content area, 
students will be supported in identifying socially responsible media practices in India through historical examples set against the larger background of various social movements and historical developments. Among other things, they will also learn about key figures of Indian national movement and social reform such as Mahatma Gandhi and B. R. Ambedkar as journalists. They will develop a fairly broad understanding of the post-colonial Indian state and the media institutions and media policies developed by the state. They will also be provided an overview of such developments in print, broadcast and digital media. Content Area 3 – Basics of Journalism Through this content area, students will be introduced to the fundamentals of journalism covering newspapers, broadcast media and social media. They will gain a foundational understanding of reporting, news gathering, interviewing and story pitching. They will learn about journalistic ethics and how to act socially responsibly as well as fact-checking techniques while gathering news. They will engage with the journey of a news story within a given span of time, the various stages of meditation, mediation. The various stages of mediation it goes through and learn to be cautious of disinformation. Page 507 they will be introduced to the tools and techniques for checking news. They will learn how to differentiate between various news story types and how to report them. Students will also practice reporting in various genres and formats by exploring issues and themes of interest to them. Content Area 4 – Media Making Project Media Making Project through this content area, students will work on themes of local relevance and use available resources to create one or more newsletters, school magazines and wall magazines. They will develop capacities for research and planning, gathering data, writing, editing, design and production. Using available tools and technology, they will create audio and video stories and curate them on social media platforms. Section 10.8 Languages A range of languages must be offered in grades 11 and 12. Illustratively, languages native to India, foreign languages, classical languages and literature of different languages. The illustration given in this chapter is of English language and English literature. 10.8.1 English Language This is an illustration for English language. 10.8.1.1 Principles for designing courses in English language the aims of English language teaching in the secondary stage are to develop communicative competence and build language proficiency. Students will build capacities for enhanced language use in real-life contexts and develop cultural awareness and appreciation for the diversity of English-speaking societies. The courses for English language must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will explore and understand the history and evolution of the English language in India. B. They will develop the ability to communicate effectively in a variety of contexts, including formal and informal settings. C. They will widen their language base for personal, academic, creative and vocational pursuits. D. They will develop the ability to comprehend and evaluate texts and explore rhetoric, reading and writing in different real-life contexts. 10.8.1.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given over here are illustrative content areas for English language in grades 11 and 12. Page 508 Content Area 1 English in India. Through this content area, 
students will learn about the history of English briefly in England and subsequently in other parts of the world with a specific focus on India. A sense of the many kinds of English spoken globally, including Indian English and English in India, is crucial to young people's understanding of themselves in the history of a once colonial and now international language. They will engage with perspectives on cross-language borrowings and enhance vocabulary skills with a focus on etymology and material on English words from Indian languages. Students will also produce reflections on their family histories of language, mapping their respective families' locations on the language grid and their own individual language-related abilities, achievements and aspirations. Content Area 2 – Functional English Through this content area, students will begin to develop functional language proficiency within and beyond academic contexts. The focus will be on effective language use in a range of contexts through which students can first improve their practical language skills in everyday encounters. Second, widen and develop their language base for academic, creative and vocational pursuits. Third, acquire widely applicable study skills. Fourth, reinforce proficiency skills gained in middle and early secondary school classes. And fifth, become increasingly independent and confident users of English. Content Area 3 English for Communication Through this content area, students further enhance their ability to move from the academic context to communication in a real-world context. Using Communicative Language Teaching CLT methods, students will be enabled to use language in simulated real-life contexts. The target language English will be used by students to perform tasks requiring communicative competence and performance. The focus will be on effective communication, while the production of language in prescribed forms will be a secondary activity. Apart from face-to-face -face communication, phone conversations would be considered, as well as the various forms of digital communication. In the process, students will develop skills in negotiation, critical thinking, and collaborative work. Also, the classroom would come as close to the real world as possible in terms of language use. Content Area 4 – English Language and Composition Through this content area, students will learn about the power of language in communication. They will gain skills in using language to influence and persuade others, as well as understand the ways in which people communicate ideas and meaning through both spoken and written language. By learning about rhetoric, students can develop the abilities needed to communicate effectively, analyze arguments critically, and engage in discourse. Emphasis will be on non-fiction texts and students will be provided opportunities to identify and analyse the persuasive language used by authors to shape and influence discourse. Students will gain the tools they need to analyse and put forth arguments, contributing to their development as informed and engaged citizens. Page 509 10.8.2 English Literature This is an illustration for English Literature. 10.8.2.1 Principles for Designing Courses in English Literature The aim of teaching English Literature is to foster in students both critical and creative skills and a deep love for literature in all its variety. The courses for English literature must be designed keeping the given points in mind. A. Students will engage with a breadth of literary texts from across India, including those translated from Indian languages. B. 
they will engage with and understand the language and the formal aspects of text through writing. C. They will use the English language as a tool for creativity and self-expression. D. They will appreciate the richness and diversity of India through literary and cultural texts. Literature is the means, the subject matter content for fluent oral and written communication. Immersion in the English language is an important focus of literature. Therefore, students must engage with reading selections grouped around possible themes of interest to secondary school students, including young adult and school life, environment, magic and wonder, science fiction, and nature. While the focus will remain primarily on written texts, students choosing English literature will be able to extend their critical and creative skills to other textual forms. 10.8.2.2 Illustrative Content Areas Given over here are illustrative content areas for English literature in grades 11 and 12. Through these content areas, Students will be introduced to a range of literary forms and acquaint them with texts from India and abroad, in English and in translation. Content Area 1 – Reading Literature Through this content area, students will learn to interpret texts and communicate their understanding orally and in writing. Students will be aware of the variety of written forms that are a part of our world, ranging from classical literary texts to newspapers and WhatsApp messages. Students can then be introduced to prose and poetry from different periods of time and diverse cultural contexts. They will learn to identify the formal features of texts and their thematic concerns. Students will individually and in groups rewrite texts by changing words, settings and beginnings and endings to understand how meanings are produced. Content Area 2 – The Short Story and the Novel Through this content area, students will be introduced to the idea of human beings as fundamentally narrative creatures with an urge for logical conclusions and of storytellers as the first custodians of community histories. Students will read some examples of short story precursors such as jests, anecdotes, parables, as well as some of their non-Western counterparts, including the Indian Katha and Kissa. They will then move on to folk and fairy tales and the fable in Western and Eastern traditions. Students will engage with a short story in its modern avatar, examining how it has developed out of earlier forms and reading four or five examples from various parts of the world. Among other things, they will inspect what fantasy means in the shorter yearners, why realism came to take over the short story at a particular time and why fantasy has made something of a comeback today. Students will briefly learn about the history of the novel and read extracts from some early novels. Finally, they will engage with a complete novel and analyze it in detail. Page 510 Content Area 3 Introduction to Poetry and Drama Through this content area, students will experience a direct engagement with a form content and effect of the works themselves. These will be foregrounded over an author and tradition-centric approach to prescribed texts. Poetry-specific activities will direct students to note the relationships between words, sounds, affect, images and cultural contexts. Drama-centric activities will also include reflections on the continuity and differences between texts and performances, on performance traditions closer home, and on the many spaces of performance like theatre, radio, streets, marketplaces, religious spaces, festivities, television, film, performance art and sketches. 
Content Area 4 Reading and Writing Poetry, Essay, Short Story or Drama Through this content area, students will concentrate on one of the four forms. They will read more advanced texts in the form chosen and engage with them critically. Students will become familiar with the formal and structural elements of the chosen form as well as with elements of its literary history and its adoption into different literary traditions in India and abroad. They will also engage in a series of writing exercises that will help them gain familiarity with the form on a practical basis and explore the possibilities it offers for their own self-expression. Students will take ownership of the chosen form and adapt it to suit their own context. Students will undertake a creative writing project where they will write their own stories, poems, essays or plays. Section 10.9 Grades 11 and 12 and Higher Education the current nature of secondary school exams, including board exams and entrance exams, and the resulting coaching culture of today, are doing much harm, especially at the secondary school level, replacing valuable time for true learning with excessive exam coaching and preparation. These exams also force students to learn a very narrow band of material in a single stream rather than allowing the flexibility and choice that will be so important in the education system of the future. NEP 2020 4.36 In recent decades, there has been an unfortunate trend in India to see grades 11 and 12 as merely a means to gain admission into higher education. The curricular logic often gets twisted due to this kind of instrumental thinking. The curricular logic of the NCF is oriented towards realizing the aims and goals for school education. The learning standards, content, pedagogy and most crucially, the assessments are designed towards achieving these aims. The purpose of the secondary stage of schooling, particularly grades 11 and 12, must not be imagined as a mechanism for selecting and sorting students for different programs in higher education. This curricular logic is derived from the four fundamental principles articulated by NEP. Page 511 A. Flexibility So that learners have the opportunity to choose their learning trajectories and programs and thereby choose their own paths in life according to their talents and interests. B. No hard separations between arts and sciences, between curricular and extracurricular activities and between vocational and academic streams. This will eliminate harmful hierarchies among and silos between different areas of learning. C. Multidisciplinarity and a holistic education across the sciences, social sciences, arts, humanities and sports for a multidisciplinary world in order to ensure the unity and integrity of all knowledge. D. Emphasis on conceptual understanding rather than rote learning and learning for exams. The curriculum for grades 11 and 12 is guided by these motivations rather than as instrumental preparation for selection into higher education programs. NEP 2020 has made a sincere attempt to delink the school education processes from the admission processes of higher education. The National Testing Agency, NTA, will work to offer a high-quality common aptitude test as well as specialised common subject exams in the sciences, humanities, languages, arts and vocational subjects at least twice every year. These exams shall test conceptual understanding and the ability to apply knowledge and shall aim to eliminate the need for taking coaching for these exams. Students will be able to choose the subjects for taking the test and each university will be able to see 
each student's individual subject portfolio and admit students into their programs based on individual interests and talents. NEP 2020 4.42 it must be emphasized here that the specialized common subject examinations envisaged by NTA should be broad in terms of focusing on the key conceptual structures and methods of investigation in the discipline. If these subject examinations test narrow content knowledge, it would be misaligned with the goals and approaches of the NCF.